What is going on, everybody? Out of Pocket Sports here. It was a crazy, crazy week in the sporting world. We're just going to basically do a weekend recap of what happened. We had the first set of bowl games come on. We had NBA, NHL. We had NFL on Saturday. We had NFL on Sunday. We also had the UFC event, Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington to recap. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. We're going to get right into the video. First, let's start off with UFC because UFC was crazy this weekend. The hype going into these fights was absolutely insane. Colby Covington had the crazy remarks about Leon Edwards' father, which was totally uncalled for in my opinion. Um, now, again, it's a fight. It's a fighting world. You're going to want to say anything to get on, under anyone's skin. But, I mean, these comments were crazy. Um, he said something about his dad and how he's going to send him into the fifth layer of hell. You're so fucking stupid. On Saturday night, I'm going to bring you to a place you never want to be. I'm going to bring you to the seventh layer of hair. Hell. Okay. No, I'm bringing you to seventh layer of hell. You, we'll, we'll, we'll say what's up to your dad while we're there. Oh! Kind of recap this card. We'll just go with the main card. Josh Emmett absolutely set Bryce Mitchell into the shadow realm. He hit him so hard, Bryce Mitchell started seizing on the floor. Uh, Josh Emmett was a huge underdog this card, plus 250. So if you hit that, congratulations. But yeah, Josh Emmett, man, he hit so hard. And that was really incredible to see. And moving on, we have the Patty Pimblett fight versus Tony Ferguson. Uh, Ferguson, there was a lot of questions surrounding this fight. You know, could he... Um, take a hit and get hit, which I think he proved he could, but his chin was still not there all the while. Um, I think even Dana White said after the fight he should just retire. But he had t David Goggins in his corner. If you don't know who David Goggins is, he's a retired Navy SEAL. He uh, is known for his motivation and stuff and things like that. So he did, uh, Tony did uh, David's Hell Week, which was crazy. But he ended up still losing the fight. Patty took that one home. And I think, I don't know what's next for Patty, you know, because it was kind of a lose-lose fight. You know, if you if you beat Tony Ferguson, well, great, you beat Tony Ferguson. Guy's on a six-fight losing streak. But if you lose to him, that looks really bad. So I'm not sure what's next for Patty. Um, we'll see. I think Hunter and Dana do a great job in the matchmaking, so I'm sure they'll have something lined up for him. But moving on, we have Shavkat Rachmanov, an absolute dominant performance. It was kind of confusing at first. He was... You know, Wonder Boy um, was stuffing the takedowns and things like that, but uh, Shavkat ended up submitting him. You know, Wonder Boy's never been submitted in the UFC or in the past, like whatever amount of fights I think it was. So to see Shavkat Rachmanov, I mean, this guy's legit. He's a legit title contender. It'll be interesting to see if they give him the title shot or Bilal Muhammad, who's also on a ten fight winning streak. And I, I really think they should give Bilal the fighting, uh, the the title fight, um, the crack at Leon, just because. You know, it's crazy going on a 10-fight winning streak and not um, not get a title shot. So um, that was that fight. And then moving on here, we have the flyweight title fight, Alexander Pantoja versus Brandon Royval. Tell you what, Pantoja just looked like an absolute champion out there. I, I mean, he, he wrestled him. He kept them down. He had some good shots. Royval really didn't get going until the fifth round. And I just think that's experience paying off for Pantoja, man. He's, he's been there. He's done that. Just another fight for him. And that showed in the fight. So moving on, the final fight, we had Leon Edwards versus Colby. To me, it looked like Colby threw this fight. And I'm not suggesting anything. Maybe he was paid off. But, I mean, if you watch the fight, he was just he, he was just not really doing anything, man. He, he wasn't throwing any punches. He wasn't throwing any kicks, really. He didn't really have any takedowns, um, not until the third round at least. And it was just very unlike Colby. If you know Colby Covington as a fighter, his theme is punches and bunches. He's going to set the pace. He's going to he's gonna be the one pushing the fight towards the center of the lockdown and pushing you back on your heels. And Leon Edwards was the one that did that. And something can be said for Leon too. He didn't look all that great either. I mean, he wasn't really throwing much either, you know. Um, he landed a couple good shots, but other than that, I mean, it was a boring, boring fight. I think the fight between Sean Strickland and Drigas Duplessis in the uh, audience was a lot better than this fight. All right, so that was the UFC recap. Let's get into NFL Saturday and Sunday. The Vikings and Bagels game was absolutely crazy. Went to overtime. Jake Browning looks like an absolute stud out there throwing the ball. Um, T. Higgins had an incredible, incredible catch at the goal line, which was absolutely insane. Either team had to win that game to keep their playoff chances alive. So the Bengals have still have playoff hopes. 
Now, the Colts and Steelers, I'm not sure if you guys saw that hit on Michael Pittman, but that was absolutely insane. The Steelers have always played dirty. I do not like the Steelers at all. And uh, that hit on Michael Pittman was certainly um, warranted an injection, which they immediately did, which I was happy about that. And moving on, the Lions just absolutely killed the Broncos. There's not much that, not much to say there. If you're a fantasy owner of Amon Ra, if you're a fantasy owner of Jameer Gibbs or Sam Laporta, you're absolutely bowing down to them. They carried you. Dolphins killed the Jets. Texans won in overtime against the Titans. The Buccaneers beat the Packers 34-20. Saints beat the Giants 24-6. Panthers beat the Falcons, which was an interesting game because it was pouring. But the Panthers probably should have lost to retain the number one draft pick. Now who knows if they will. I know no team is looking to lose, but they beat the Falcons 9-7. The Browns won on a crazy game um, against the Bears. My Brownies, baby. That was absolutely insane. Hail Mary at the end of the game. Guy has the ball in his fingertips. Uh, Justin Fields threw a ball. One of the receivers for the Bears had the ball in their fingertips. In the breadbasket, essentially. Couldn't corral it. Ended up in an interception for the Browns. That's how the game ended. Absolutely wild. Browns keep their playoff hopes alive. Chiefs killed the Patriots. 49ers, Cardinals. Dude, I'll tell you what. Christian McCaffrey, absolute machine. I'm going up against him in fantasy this week, and it's uh, it's bad news for me, man. Um he put up like what 40 something points or 45 points or whatever it was. I mean, it's unfair. It, it really is unfair. Uh, moving on, we have the Rams and Commanders. Rams got it done uh, 28 to 20. That wasn't really the story of the game. If you look at that score line, you think it was closer. It really wasn't. I mean, Rams took control of the game pretty quickly, and they Commanders just scored some garbage time touchdowns. And how about the Bills having their way with the Cowboys? We heard all this Dak for MVP crap. And I tell you what, the Bills defense showed up in a big way. They picked them off a few times, had a few fumble recoveries. The the Bills showed up, man, especially for a team that has been kind of struggling to find their identity all year. They showed up in a big way against the Cowboys. All right, and moving on to NBA, there's only really one note I want to make about this because I don't know NBA all that well, but how about the Pistons having the worst start in franchise history? They've lost, a, I think, a franchise record of 23 straight games, which is, I mean absolutely insane how does that even happen as a franchise that's disgraceful i mean i get it they're a young team they have like Kay cunningham a couple other younger guys i think they're the youngest starting roster in the nba right now and but to lose 23 consecutive straight games is really bad um it's really really bad so i just don't see the pistons turn around man it'll be interesting to see how many wins they finish up with at the end of the year can they will they get the 10 i don't even know that's it's sad to say but we'll that's like the good over under right there we'll, we'll revisit this video once the season is up and uh we'll see if they can get past 10 wins but yeah that's the end of the video thanks for watching the daily sports weekly recap if you guys enjoyed this make sure you leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down we love the negative feedback here at out of pocket sports make sure you say something out of pocket in the comments we'll catch you in the next one peace